story up. Jesus on his way to Bethany, we pick the story up in verse 17. So when Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb for how many days, everyone? Four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away, and many of the Jews had joined the women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went out to meet him, but Mary was sitting in the house. Mary was just so devastated that Jesus hadn't come, she couldn't even face him. She stayed in the house. Notice this now. It says in verse 21, Now Martha said to Jesus, not hi, not hello, not how are things. The very first words out of her mouth are, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. The very first thing that she says is, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. Let me ask you a question. Is that a statement of faith or a statement of doubt? It's both. Because it's a statement of faith because she's saying, if you would have been here, you could have prevented it. But it's also a statement of doubt because she's saying, why weren't you here? Now, I want you to notice something that Martha doesn't say, I believe, it's possible, it could be, perhaps. She says, I know that if you would have been here, he would not have died. I have a question for you. In Martha's mind, was Jesus able to do something powerful four days ago? Yes or no? Oh, sure. Was Lazarus sick, everyone? Yeah, and basically what Martha said is, Oh, Jesus, if you would have been here four days ago, you could have done something. I know that if you would have been here four days ago, you could have prevented him from dying. Did Martha have total confidence that Jesus could have worked in the past, yes or no? Absolutely. Oh, if you would have been here, you really could have prevented this. Now look at this. Verse 23. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Notice the first two words out of, out of her mouth. Verse 24, Martha said to him, what are the first two words? I know. Jesus says to her, Martha, I got great news for you. Your brother's going to rise again. And Jesus is thinking in like 20 minutes. I just got to take care of a few, you know, niceties here. I'll make my way over to the tomb. Your brothers, you will have dinner with your brother tonight. But I want you to notice what she says. Look at this. I know, I what everyone? I know that he will rise again in the resurrection, what? At the last day. Oh, huh. does Martha believe that Jesus could raise Lazarus in the future? Absolutely. So let's step into Martha's world now. Martha believed that Jesus could have done something in the past. Martha believed that Jesus will do something in the future. But Jesus had said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. I'm in verse 25. I am. Let's say that together. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, yet he shall live. And whoever believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who has come into the world. Martha believed that Jesus could have prevented Lazarus from dying, and Martha believed that that same Jesus was going to raise Lazarus at the last day, but when Jesus says to her, your brother will rise again, it doesn't even cross the radar screen of her mind that Jesus meant right now. Oh, but some of you are sneaky Bible students, and you read verse 22, didn't you? Yeah, you did. You thought Pastor Asher didn't do his homework. Look at verse 22. She says, but I know that even now, whatever you ask of God, He will give it to you. And you're looking at verse 22 and verse 27, you're saying, oh, Pastor Asher, she believed that He could do it right there. No, she didn't. She did not believe that He could do it right there. Do you know how I know for fact that she did not believe that? Because when Jesus makes His way to the tomb in just a few moments, and He says, take that stone away from the tomb, Martha raises an objection. She says, no, 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 He's been in the tomb for four days, He's going to stink. She had an intellectual belief. Oh, sure, it's possible, Jesus. It's intellectually possible that you could do something, but in the unlikely event that you will, we know you'll do it in the future, and we know you could have done it in the past. Martha's belief is just like your belief. How many of you believe that God could work mightily today? Go ahead and raise your hands. Raise your hands right now. You believe that. Yeah, I know you believe that, but your belief is just like Martha's. It's totally intellectual. Because when it comes time for the rubber to meet the road, you're going to object just like Martha did. Incidentally, Mary said the same thing. I'm still in John chapter 11. And notice with, with me, Mary says the very same thing in verse 32. Then when Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet 
And she said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have what, everyone? Died. She says the same thing. You know that the ladies had been talking. Sometimes that happens, huh, ladies? All the ladies say amen. <laughs> All the pious ones won't say amen, but the Lord reads your heart. Now, don't get me wrong, guys can gossip too, amen? But clearly the ladies had been talking. Because the first thing that comes out of Martha's mouth, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. First thing out of Mary's mouth, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. You could have done something in the past, Jesus. It's just too bad the past is gone. Jesus says your brother will rise again. Oh, I know. Oh, I'm total confident. Jesus, I went to the seminary. I know that he's going to raise again in the resurrection at the last day. So they make their way over to the tomb. I'm picking it up in verse... Let's pick it up in verse 33. Therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in his spirit and he was troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. Verse 35, Jesus what, everyone? Now, is Jesus weeping for Lazarus? Is Jesus weeping for Lazarus? Yeah. You know why we know that Jesus is not weeping for Lazarus? Because he knows he's going to raise him in just a few minutes. Isn't that right, young lady? Yeah, even she knows. No question about it. It says, Jesus wept. Shortest verse in all the Bible. Then the Jews said to him, Oh, see how he loved him. Oh, he's so devastated. Verse 37. And some of them said, Could not this man... Look at this. Everybody believed like Mary and Martha. Could not this man uh, who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Notice, couldn't he have kept him from dying? But why not say, Could not this man who healed the eyes of the blind, couldn't he raise him from the dead? That thought doesn't even come across anyone's mind. This is fascinating, by the way. Incidentally, do you know why Jesus is crying? One word. I can tell you why Jesus is crying in one word. Unbelief. Let's all say that together. Unbelief. That's why he's crying. In the Desire of Ages, Ellen White makes this abundantly clear. She says that he looked all around them. There's people, oh, we miss Lazarus so much. And Jesus, the great I Am, the Messiah, the one for whom the Jews had looked for more than a thousand years, is standing in their very midst. And there's a dead body over there. There's the life giver. There's the dead body. Everyone's wailing. And Jesus says, you missed it. Here I am. I'm here. I can do it. I can raise him. And nobody even sees it. Not even Mary sees it. Martha doesn't see it. The disciples don't see it. They're all wailing and bemoaning the death of Lazarus. No one sees it. And so Jesus begins to cry and they don't even discern why he's crying. But he's crying for them, not for Lazarus. I'm going to say something here. Don't you ever forget this. Your unbelief breaks the heart of God and causes him to weep. Say amen. Your unbelief causes God to weep. Incidentally, you know that that's why they were crying. Jump down to verse 42. Jesus is praying here to his Father, and he says in verse 42, the last part of verse 41, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, and I know that you always hear me, but because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they might what? Believe that you sent me. Jesus is weeping for their unbelief. The great life giver, the great I am, is standing in their very midst. And they're missing it. He's not the great I was at that moment. He's not the great I will be. He's right there. The I am mighty to save and no one gets it. So Jesus says, verse 38, Jesus, groaning within himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone lay against it. And Jesus said, take away the what, everyone? Stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said... Lord, by this... Notice what she didn't say. She didn't say, oh, praise God. Jesus, you're going to raise him right now. I don't know why I hadn't, I hadn't thought of that earlier. Marvelous, wonderful, glory. Jesus is going to raise Lazarus. Everyone, listen, stop crying. Notice what she says. Lord, he stinks. <laughs> Has it even crossed the radar screen of Martha's mind that Jesus could raise Lazarus right there, yes or no? Yes or no? It's not even on the radar screen. It's not even in the universe of her mind. 
She raises an objection. Oh, Lord, I don't think that's such a good idea. Isn't it funny? The disciples wanted to teach something about health, and now Mary wants, Martha wants to teach something uh, to Jesus about death. Jesus, let us teach you something about decomposition. He's going to stink. And many of us are busy teaching God something instead of being taught by God. Mm. Another sermon. Won't preach that one right now. Desire of Ages, page 535. You ever heard of that book? I said, you ever heard of that book? Okay, good. About half of you. The other half of you need to read it. Desire of Ages, page 535. When the Lord is about to do a work, Satan moves upon someone to object. <laughs> Did you hear that? When God is about ready to work, the devil has his bell ringer. Ding, 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 ding. Won't work, can't work, done that, tried it, won't work. We're going to start a youth movement. And uh, we have an idea that we don't have to have pizza parties, puppets, and clowns, and the youth will come. And, and we're going to advertise, and we think we might get 50 people. The first year I see there ever was, there was 400 people. Can you say amen? amen? More than double what they expected. And of course, there was a whole bunch of bell rings saying, ding, 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 ding. Can't work, won't work, been there, tried that. And yet I've been to all GYCs except two of them, and I had spies at the other ones, and they told me how everything went. No pizza parties, no clowns, no puppets, no rock and roll band. Someone say amen. amen. And yet as far as the eye can see, I see young people. So when Satan is about, or pardon me, when God is about ready to do a mighty work, Satan raises up somebody to object. And get this, it doesn't have to be a bad person that objects. Who objects here? One of his disciples objects. Martha objects. He said, you know, we want to try something. We want to try something radical. We want to try something new. We want to try something innovative right here in our church. And you got a hundred people telling you how it won't work. Someone say that's true. Is that true? won't work. When God is about ready to work, listen to the rest of this, Desire of Ages 535. When the Lord is about ready to work, Satan moves upon someone to object. Take away the stone, Christ said, as far as possible, prepare the way for my work. But Martha's positive and ambitious nature asserted itself. She was unwilling that the decomposing body should be brought to view. The human heart is slow to understand Christ's words and Martha's faith had not grasped the true meaning of Christ's promise. Jesus says, okay, take the stone away. Let's get this game on. Get that stone out of there. Lazarus is going to be too weakened and emaciated to, to move that stone by himself. Move the stone. Uh oh, Jesus, you can't work right now because there's reasons you can't work right now. He's decomposing and he'll stink. Can you imagine Jesus saying, you know, you're right, Martha. I don't know why I hadn't thought of that before. Here I am, the infinite omnipresent, omnibenevolent, omniscient God of the universe and it hadn't dawned on me that he's going to stink. I'm sorry, leave the stone there. I'll have to wait to some future day to do a mighty work. And we chuckle, but beloved, I hope that chuckling is piercing your heart because you're a bunch of Marthas in here and you know it. You believe in Gideon's God who did something great? And you believe in the woman at the well is God who will do something great and you're just like Martha. Oh, if you'd been here yesterday, Jesus, you could have done something.